Welcome to a world where the thirst for energy collides with the fragility of life. This is not a tale of science fiction, but an exploration of a chilling reality. The captivating yet perilous world of energy drink related injuries and deaths. In a world on the brink of burnout, we've all been there. Whether cramming for events, pushing through the extra shift at work, or battling the relentless demands of life itself, the allure of that neon-colored, caffeinated concoction is very hard to resist. It promises vitality, vigor, and the ability to overcome the insurmountable. But as we delve into the depths of this captivating medical mystery, we uncover stories that will both astonish and haunt you. Picture a man, just 41 years old, healthy and robust, setting out on an ordinary night shift with a seemingly harmless habit sipping an energy drink to stay awake. Or a mother, pushing her limits to juggle a career and a family, who turns to these elixirs of alertness. Little do they know, their choices may be steering them toward an unforeseen and devastating fate. Join us as we unravel the secrets of these seemingly innocuous beverages and expose the true extent of their impact on human lives. Welcome to the captivating, heart-pounding world energy drink related injuries and deaths a story that demands to be heard in a tragic incident that unfolded in california a seemingly harmless habit ended up taking the life of john reynolds a 41 year old father of three this incident sheds light on the dangerous consequences of consuming high caffeine energy drinks. John, a non-smoker and non-drinker, relied on energy drinks to keep him alert during his night shift as a mechanic. On February 5th, 2011, his wife Cassandra woke up to the sound of her husband gasping for breath. She performed CPR while waiting for emergency services, provided instructions over the phone. As John struggled for his life, their three children walked in, witnessing the dire situation. The paramedics arrived promptly and rushed John to the hospital. Although he was still breathing, he had suffered a cardiac arrest and was placed in a medically induced coma. The medical team was puzzled by the seemingly healthy 41-year-old's sudden cardiac arrest. They discovered that John had high sugar levels, initially suspecting a diabetic episode. However, Cassandra clarified that he was not diabetic. He was placed in a medically induced coma and the head cardiologist began investigating further. During their conversation, Cassandra revealed that John consumed an energy drink daily before his night shifts. The doctor explained that even a single energy drink could disrupt the heart's rhythm, causing a heart arrhythmia. Cassandra was shocked by the realization that one energy drink could lead to such a tragic outcome. John's condition deteriorated rapidly, resulting in an anoxic brain injury due to oxygen deprivation. Cassandra decided not to let their boys witness his critical state during his hospital stay. And tragically, a few weeks later, John was declared brain dead. After 14 days, on February 19th, she made the heart-wrenching decision to turn off his life support. A similar tale to John happened six years later, this time involving the legal system and energy drink brands themselves. It all started when the family of a 25-year-old named Anton O'Mellon, who was found dead in his Fife home, had filed a lawsuit against energy drink companies, alleging that his consumption of Red Bull, NOS, and Monster beverages played a role in his death on October 30th, 2014. Anton's widow, Anna O'Mellon, claims that her husband regularly consumed at least four 16-ounce cans of energy drinks per day. Despite being a seemingly healthy young man, he experienced a sudden and tragic demise. Anton had a few shots of alcohol and consumed two 16-ounce cans of Red Bull the evening before his death. The next morning, his wife discovered him unresponsive in the bathroom with signs of vomiting. Emergency responders arrived but were unable to save him. The Pierce County Medical Examiner's Office 
determined the cause of death to be aspiration of gastric contents, with alcohol intoxication as a contributing factor. The lawsuit argues that the excessive caffeine in the energy drinks led to Anton's insomnia and masked the effects of alcohol, potentially causing him to consume more. It contends that the energy drink companies should have provided warnings about the risks of using their products in combination with alcohol during exercise or in excessive quantities. The energy drink companies, however, have defended their products, asserting their safety. Monster Energy pointed out that their beverages contain less caffeine than a Starbucks coffee and denied any casual link between their drinks and Anton O'Mellon's death. They also mentioned previous dismissals of similar lawsuits. While the lawsuit raises concerns about the potential health risks associated with energy drink consumption, the energy drink industry maintains that their products are safe and regulatory authorities worldwide have approved their sale. Sometimes people are lucky enough to survive, but the damage done in the end is still just as startling. A 55-year-old man named Lee Kamen from Hull, UK, recently suffered a heart attack, attributing it to his excessive consumption of energy drinks, averaging between 8 to 12 cans daily for a year. Despite not smoking or drinking, Kamen's heart attack was linked to his energy drink habit, leading to a stent and lifelong medication. The doctor identified these drinks as the cause during his hospital stay. He's now advocating for a ban on energy drinks or restricting sales to those under 16. Mr. Common's concern escalated when he discovered his 10-year-old daughter with one of these drinks, prompting him to discard it. You see, health guidelines recommend that children and teenagers aged 12 to 18 should limit their daily caffeine intake to 100 milligrams, approximately equivalent to a cup of coffee. However, energy drinks often contain caffeine levels ranging from 50 to 500 milligrams per serving. In response to these concerns, many prominent UK supermarkets have voluntarily stopped selling energy drinks to individuals under 16. And it all makes sense when you look at the science behind it. Energy drinks have surged in popularity and have become a prominent fixture in the dietary supplement landscape in the United States and beyond. They currently rank as the second most consumed dietary supplement among certain age groups, trailing only behind multivitamins. Startingly, over 30% of adolescents between the ages of 12 and 17 now incorporate energy drinks into their regular consumption. Despite their widespread appeal, these highly caffeinated and often sugary beverages have raised significant concerns within the medical community. Experts have pointed to a slew of potential health issues associated with energy drink consumption, including elevated blood pressure, weight gain, headaches, anxiety, dental problems, dehydration, and an increased risk of heart disease. Nevertheless, the allure of energy drinks continues to grow. Prominent figures, and particularly celebrities, actively endorse these beverages on platforms like TikTok, driving their popularity to new heights. Global sales of energy drinks are projected to exceed a staggering $53 billion by the end of the year, with an anticipated 7.1% increase by 2027. A key characteristic of energy drinks is their notably high caffeine content, which is commonly associated with both mental and physical performance enhancement. Athletes often turn to these beverages to boost their production, while students leverage their stimulating effects to supercharge their all-night cramming before a big exam or whenever a major project is due. In accordance with recommendations from the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, most adults can safely consume up to 400 milligrams of caffeine daily. To put this in perspective, it's roughly equivalent to the caffeine content in about four cups of coffee, or around a dozen 12-ounce cans of a popular cola, like Coke. However, 
the caffeine allowances are drastically lower for young adults, as previously mentioned. According to a pediatrician and the Region 2 chairperson of the National Medical Association, adolescents should restrict their daily caffeine intake to a maximum of the aforementioned 100 milligrams. It's important to note that many energy drinks far exceed this limit. Some popular brands, such as Red Bull, Monster, Celsius, and Bang, contain caffeine levels well above the recommended threshold, causing the American Academy of Pediatrics to also advise against their consumption by anyone under 18. According to data from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, 16 ounce energy drinks typically contain anywhere from 70 to 240 milligrams of caffeine on average. The energy drink brand Bang, which has garnered substantial attention with our younger generations, offers a staggering 300 milligrams of caffeine in its 16 ounce concoction. This product comes with a clear warning label indicating that it is unsuitable for underage individuals and should not be combined with other caffeine-containing products. In addition to caffeine, energy drinks often contain other legal stimulants, such as guarana, taurine, and L-carotene. Unfortunately, the presence of these additives is not always easily discernible from the label or marketing materials, further complicating the issue. Experts argue that more research is needed to establish safe levels of consumption for these additives. Cardiologists from Cedars-Sinai Heart Institute express grave concerns about energy drinks. These concerns primarily revolve around the potential for irregular heart rhythms, known as arrhythmias, which can result from the overstimulation of the heart. Arrhythmias can disrupt blood flow, leading to dizziness or fainting and if left untreated, they can evolve into more severe and even fatal conditions. Energy drinks also have the capacity to raise blood pressure. A 2019 randomized control trial demonstrated that energy drinks could elevate blood pressure in otherwise healthy young adults. Additionally, a recent study linked energy drinks with hypertension in children and teenagers. For individuals, already suffering from hypertension, the risks are even higher, as these drinks can further increase blood pressure. It's worth noting that many young individuals might not even realize that they have hypertension. While the potential long-term consequences of energy drink consumption include heart failure and heart attacks, these associations are difficult to confirm through randomized control trials. Consequently, Experts generally caution against the consumption of energy drinks, underscoring the need for vigilance when choosing what to consume. In addition to the concerns about energy drinks on their own, there's a substantial warning against mixing them with alcohol. Alcohol, a depressant, can create conflicting signals in the brain when combined with the stimulating effects of energy drinks. The potential consequences of this mix-up are unpredictable and can disrupt normal neurotransmitter function. In 2010, the FDA took action against caffeinated alcoholic beverages, leading to reformulations that removed caffeine, guarana, and the aforementioned additives from such products. However, cocktails like Jaeger bombs, which combine energy drinks and alcohol, are still readily available. The CDC reported in 2017 that nearly 32% of adults aged 19 through 28 had consumed an energy drink mixed with alcohol in the previous year. Combining alcohol and caffeine can also extend the time it takes for the caffeine to leave the body, thereby prolonging stimulation. This additional stimulation can lead to overconsumption of alcohol, contributing to binge drinking, especially among young adults. While a single energy drink may contain less than the FDA's recommended safe caffeine intake of 400 milligrams, those who rely on these drinks often consume multiple units to achieve the desired effect. A study in 2015 found that some nursing students consumed up to 30 energy drinks in a single week to stay awake while studying for exams. The initial stimulation provided by these drinks tends to diminish over time. 
Athletes who consider using energy drinks for performance enhancement should consult with a healthcare provider to evaluate the potential risks and benefits. In summary, the consensus among experts is clear. Caution should be exercised in choosing what you consume, especially when it comes to energy drinks. These products are not without their potential health hazards, and it is vital to prioritize one's well-being over the allure of quick fixes promoted by the food and beverage industry. And above all, if you can help but grab that cold monster from the fridge or help aid a restless night with the occasional Red Bull, that's fine. As long as it doesn't become a daily dependence or habit involving a lot of energy drinks per day, per year, you should be able to live a normal and healthy life. Once you take a trip down the rabbit hole, however, any energy drink after that might be your last.